Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday, made it through another week. And yes, tomorrow is Jacktown. Now it's funny, we've had such great weather here for the past 10 or 15 days. It's been beautiful, high pressure front. And don't you know it tomorrow, of all days, tomorrow they're forecasting rain. But that's uh, don't let that worry you because Jacktown is a rain or shine show. Some of my favorite experiences at that show was during the rain. Just make sure you wear boots and bring an umbrella. Dress for the uh, dress a little bit warmer and you're golden. We're going to have a great time. We'll be there at the gazebo, 10 o'clock. Hope you can make it. Uh, we got a couple things to do today. Today, I wanted to build something, something from scratch, something I've had in my mind for a long time ago. Basically, I want to make a kilowatt meter, kind of. So uh, let's get right to that. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Let's see what we can do. Okay, you remember over the last month, we used uh, this PVC fence post uh, to make a couple projects. One of them was this dim bulb indicator or tester. One was this toolbox. And today I wanted to make basically something I already have. I have this kilowatt. And what this does, this measures wattage and amperage and other things like that. Very economical. You can pick one of these up for $20 or so. They have all different types. Excellent to have. I'll go into why this is so important to have in a little while. But I wanted to make one out of some extra fence posts that I have using some of these gauges these panel meters that i have i just wanted to i just felt like doing it so what do you say we put something together that is uh is good to have down the shop and maybe you might want to make one for now yourself. i have this i have a bunch of spares but this one here was a, kind of a a short piece that i said would make a nice little test box and i figured i would like to have maybe a maybe a bulb uh an outlet on top because i could use it as a bulb tester a switch, um, the two gauges, an indicator, and of course the outlet coming out here. And there's a couple uses for this thing, but first thing we want to do is, um, and and maybe I'll uh, do something different. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll scallop the edges a little bit so it looks a little bit different. I'll see how that goes. But um, what first thing I wanted to do is, uh, you see how this is kind of messed up and scuffed up and whatnot this here you ever see these st some the sticky ones they use on this outdoor fence post is the hardest to get off because it's plastic you can't use a razor blade uh, let me show you the best stuff i found for getting sticky residue off anyway. now the best stuff i have found is ronsonol lighter fluid this is great st oh look also excellent for <laughs> removing grease oil and tar and labels and it really is it's it's not for the uh the chemical that's uh, but you soak it in just let it saturate for a second okay uh, there's an oil in here too so you can use it for some people used to use that for oiling you know um, small mechanisms in a, in a pinch and then take one of your uh, if you have these are great these plastic razor blades and uh, just let that soak in but you can see what happens it dissolves the glue and I'm telling you I've used a lot of different products People say WD-40 and whatnot. Nothing works as good as Ronsonol uh, lighter fluid for removing this sticky residue. So give it a try. Okay, we uh, now you have to just gather some parts together. And what we have is we have a NOS porcelain uh, surface mount lamp holder. We have a couple of these gauges i like these old style analog gauges you see here's the amperage the other one's voltage we have an indicator light to know that you have power onto the unit a couple switch plates new old stock leviton i love this old electric stuff but uh nice new old stock leviton outlet nice switch to go with it 15 amp and a cord off of uh, an old air conditioning so we're good to go now we just got to cut off uh, the ends, make the uh, the ends. That, remember how we did that with the bandsaw and then uh, put it together. Okay, next up we're ready to drill out the holes for the gauges and... Uh, what you do is you take your gauge like this, you pull out an appropriate hole. So I found this one here. Now this one was real close. Now I wasn't sure if it was gonna to be too small. Last thing you wanna do is drill the hole out, it's too small, then you have to enlarge the hole, that's always a pain. Um, so what I did is I drilled a, 
a test fit hole on a piece of uh, scrap ply and you can see this fits in there real nice and snug which is what you want now when you're using this this is a this is your regular hole saw and you you get what's called a two-piece arbor this is the arbor here it has a drill a pilot drill and it looks something like this this gets inserted from the inside okay just like this and you twist it and it can only once it locks in there's a little uh oval that locks it in there and then you take the curved section here and you just screw it down like this take a little a wrench and just give it a, a, a it don't have to be super tight but there we go now that's ready to, to saw uh saw your hole make a hole and uh the key is that you want to drill pilot holes first because this might wander a little bit so make sure you got your pilot holes where you want and then i'll show you what it looks like on the drill press okay we have our table locked down we have the pilot hole made and we only have about a half an inch above it so you know, we don't have a lot of quill travel and let the saw do the work. Bob is your uncle. Now in between every hole that you make, you have to take the plug out. So that's why you have to take the arbor apart like this and you'll push it out like that there's a little spring in there but this will uh, pop out the arbor you just tap this like this and it will pop that out you have to do that every time you can't go making a bunch of holes here it's coming along nicely now one of the th reasons i enjoy building these little enclosures is because you have to have extreme concentration when you have extreme concentration that is the most relaxing time in the shop you forget about all the the problems going on and Here's an example here. You know, you want it to be symmetrical and you want your screws to line up and to be accurate. So what I like to do is, uh, this is called the combination square. And the reason they call that, because it does a bunch of different things. But um, what you do is you set it up here and you, you have it flush against here. You draw your line here. You have it flush against here. You draw a line here. And then you do the same from the outsides. And that's how you get your your screws in the right spot and your gauges when this is sitting up it, it you know it's pleasing to the eye so that's an important thing these things really do come in handy and you know this one's got a level in it which means it's most likely you'll knock this off the bench and drop it whenever there's a level in something it's like a magnet to the floor okay everything's coming along nicely next up we have one more hole to make and that's back here for the power cord to go into power this unit up now um, I decided to use this cord here. It's a heavy duty cord. It's, um, now I want to put a grommet. A grommet is a, uh, interface between the cabinet that you're using, which is this and the cord. You just don't want to drill a hole and have the cord hanging out there. It looks, now you can make your own, uh, interface kind of between, you can use a piece of rubber hose or something else kind of as a strain relief. So it's not rubbing against the edge of the cabinet. But a grommet's very professional, and this is what it looks like. Um, you buy them in kits. The best way is to buy them, like an accessory, a bunch of them. And they do come in handy for a lot of other things. But um, this one here will fit. But you got to make sure when you're using the grommet that this diameter, the thickness, is the same thickness as your cabinet. You know what I mean? So it, it fits in there nicely like that. So we have a good match. Now, when you drill a hole, what you have to do is you have to take your calipers of some sort and get this diameter you see you don't want the you don't want to drill that hole size you want to drill the diameter here which is five eighths of an inch now to do that we're going to use a step drill and you can see here this is marked on the inside five eighths of an inch and you can also check it here see that's what we want so what we're going to do is we're going to take a magic marker and put it around the ring above because when this is spinning you can't see the so we'll uh, put a magic marker. I'll show you what that looks okay, like. Okay, you can see we marked with a magic marker. We do not want to go past. That's just a stop line. We want to go right to the step below it, and we'll drill that out. Now that we have our hole drilled, what we're going to do is soften up the grommet in hot water and then slip it in here you have to kind of pinch it in and slip it in okay once you're grommet, and i can't emphasize that warm water trick enough because that really makes it supple and e easier to get in once your grommet is installed the cord should fit like that you feel you see that you know it's not it's no loose it, it's nice and and tight and snug in there 
And then when you put the cord in, you're going to put a zip tie around the inside or two so that this cannot come out. And uh, that way it's locked in. One other really good use for grommets is to put on your vice handle. So this way when the handle drops down, it cushions it and doesn't slam. So I've had these on for years and they really work fantastic. Grommets on your vice handle. Okay, now when you're hooking things like this, sometimes it could get a little confusing. If it does, you always break down each component into its simplest form. So for example, we have a switch on the box, okay? Now here we have a switch, it's a standard toggle switch and all the switch does is break the circuit. So let's say you have power coming in. It takes one line of the, of the usually the hot, of the line coming in and it puts it onto the switch. One goes here, the switch goes to your load and then the load goes back to the plug and that is this a simple switch. Then we have a voltmeter. A voltmeter is super simple because all you have is one lead goes to each side of the voltmeter. There's two little uh, screws at the back of the meters that you can hook it up to. Some have these little screws in the front if they're panel based or if they have a base on it. But either way, it's just one lead to each side. Nothing could be simpler. An amperage meter is just a little bit different in the sense that instead of going one to each, what you're doing is you're separating the hot lead, okay? So you have the hot lead coming out of your plug. It goes to the one side of the amp meter. The other side of the amp meter goes to your load, the load back to the plug. Again, very simple. And of course, the last item we have is an outlet. An outlet is nothing more. If you were hooking a plug up to an outlet, there's uh, three prongs coming out of the plug. There's a ground, a hot, and a neutral. And if you look at the plug, remember we always said the large side of the plug is the neutral. Uh, this is a ground down here. It's usually green. So the green that comes out of your plug goes right to the ground. There's a white that will come out of your plug line that goes to the neutral. White is neutral. And this is usually silver on the side. And then there's a black lead, and that goes to the brass colored screws on this side or the shorter spade. So it's, nothing could be simpler if you just break it down one at a time. And we're calling this project done. This one here is something I really am proud of. I really enjoy because this just kind of I conjured this up to make this. And um, it believe me, it's nothing more than this. In fact, this does more features if you buy one of these. But everybody should have a, a, something that measures not only a voltage that comes into your your home, but also uh, at the uh, things that you use, the amperage that it draws. And you could tell a lot by what kind of amperage it's drawing. For example, if it's drawing more or less amps than it's uh, support, than it's rated for, you know you might have an issue. Also, if let's say you're using a few different things and you, you want to see if you're, uh, because remember your, your circuit break is a lot of things might be on one circuit. And if you're running two or three tools and that adds up to more than, 15 amps is what most circuits are you know you might pop a fuse or something it's always good to know what this so that's what this is it's voltage and you can see here right now we're at about uh 100 and uh 120 volts so to speak or it's just yeah about 120 and uh we have no amperage in, because we have nothing plugged in over here we have the switch on this side you can see it's a regular standard wall switch and we have two indicators this here this bulb the reason I do this, I collect light bulbs. I can put different bulbs in and see what they draw because I have that also on the gauge. Over here is the outlet. So let's plug something in and see exactly how it works. Okay, here you can see we're going to plug in just a bulb just to show you. Watch the amperage meter as we put the bulb in here and you will see that it draws less than an amp and that's showing rightly so on, on the gauge. Now let's plug in Let's put a, uh, a higher voltage, higher wattage bulb on here. This one's about three times, so it should register on the meter a little bit more. Okay, let's try this one out. This is Now, this is three times the power. This is 300 watts. That's 100 watts. This should draw just under three amps. Let's see what we got. And yes, there we go. See? it's uh, And it gets very hot very quickly. Okay, here we have a Milwaukee uh, drill. And you can see here, this one's rated, if you could see that, it's rated for 5.5 amps okay you could see that now what i'm going to do is i'm going to free spin it which means I'm, I'm not there's no load on it so it's not going to use that kind of amperage take a a good look at the uh the amp gauge and you should see it shouldn't run anywhere near the 5.5 amps when there's no load
So you can see it went up to about three, a little over three amps, right? Now watch, I'm going to hold the chuck and I'm going to apply some uh, power to it while holding the chuck and watch the amperage climb as I, that'll, uh, that'll um, be like a load is on there. Watch it. Okay, I'm going to hold it and slowly. Okay, you see that? I was able to, by holding the chuck and giving it a little bit of power, was able to get it up to the rated 5.5 .5 amps. So isn't that interesting? And you see the initial draw always draws more amperage when you kick it on. So you're always going to use more amperage on startup than when it's running. Okay, so in closing, uh, you see the analog gauges have a slightly different performance than digital. Digital, the numbers will roll. You don't really know what's going on. And I, I, you know, I'm old school. I like the analog. You can see exactly what's going on at what point, where the needle, you know, digital. Sometimes when those numbers roll around so fast, you can't really tell exactly what's going on. So uh, a lot of old schoolers like the analog gauges. That's why I put this together. And uh, you can have a lot of fun with this testing different tools. Any, anyway, let me know what you think of the project. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope to see you tomorrow. Uh, for the rest of you, Monday, I will bring you along and show you just as if you're there with me. So we'll have that on Monday. I hope you have a great weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.